Hello and welcome to Requested Nodes, a series focused on the community questions about the visual scripting tool. Hello and welcome everybody. Today we are going to be looking at a request made from Hester. Uh, Hester was asking for a really simple explanation here. He wants to know how to make a message appear whenever you enter into a trigger on a map using the visual scripting tool. So really quickly here, I've already uh, set up a testing scenario. If you don't know how to set up scenarios and stuff, I'll cover that in a main series. But assuming that you have the visual scripting tool all set up and you have all your file locations and everything set normally, just create a really quick new scenario. You don't have to really call it anything, but go into your mission scripts. So as you can see here, this should be about what you start out with. You'll have a player died event, uh, method dispose, method update, method game started, method game finished, and you'll have two uh, bluish nodes here for like one start state machine, the other one session reload last checkpoint. Now, I have over here on the left set up that my toolbox is docked here. You might not have it be the exact same, that's okay. You can also access your function list from obviously right click and then function. Now, you will need the toolbox for some of the nodes we're using today. One of the nodes that you're going to want is the events. So as you can see, we have lots of different event <clears throat> nodes here. Now the one we're going to want is area trigger underscore entered. So you can just click and drag that onto here and it'll drop up. Now, as you can see here, we have three points that we can connect. We can have, we have the main logic node uh, connection which obviously I dragged it off there and it wants to grab it. You have the string trigger name and the integer 64 player ID. Now, if you have multiple triggers in your game world and you want to sort via a list, you can use this connection here to return the string trigger name. Now, there's another way to do this. And if my uh, world's file location does not pop up for me, is there's an event with keys location, or sorry, event with keys list. Now in here, again, we can also see there's an area triggered enter. Now, if I drag that on here. You can see it's slightly different. There's only two connection points on it. It's a little bit taller, but you see the string trigger name here. So in here, you can have it where, let's say that our trigger name is trigger underscore test. So as you can see, now that fills in. So what'll happen is, for this one, whenever this trigger detects that someone enters it, it will trigger, obviously it'll start the event, and then it'll also give you the integer 64 player ID of the person who enters into this. Now this is slightly different than the just normal event of area triggered entered. Area triggered entered fires off whenever any trigger on the map is entered by any player. And then what it returns to you is the trigger name that was entered and the integer 64 player ID of who was entered. Now for here, we just want to display a very simple message. So I'm just going to minimize these two lists here. And so in the functions listing, you can have, there is a set called notifications. And in here you can see you can add notifications or you can send chat messages, remove, display, congratulations screens, you know, all sorts of different stuff. So we're going to have it where it's going to add a notification and it's also going to send a chat message. Now here's the thing. If you notice here, there's an add notification and there's a show notification. So the difference is an add notification typically only works for the player who triggers the action. Now there's a show notification and show notification to all. Show notification again is the same thing where it's only for a specific player. But if we do a show notification to all, it'll show that notification to anybody who is currently connected to that game session. That's an important thing to make a distinction of. It's a little bit strange and sometimes you just have to play around to see which one does what. So anyways, so we're going to have it where it adds a notification to the player screen and it's also going to send us a chat message. So really quickly here, another thing that I'm going to do just for uh, to make this easier is I'm going to use a, uh, I believe it's a branch. Uh, sorry, my bad, that is not a branch. It is a sequence. So we're just going to connect this here and do step zero be the add notification and step two being add the send chat message. Now, it doesn't have to be set up like this. You could, instead of this, you can um, 
you could just add this onto the end here. I'm just doing this because, I don't know, it's just the way I like doing things. It's up to you how you do this. Anyway, so uh, really quickly here, we can just edit the text here. Now, as you can see here, there is a connection point. So if you wanted to use uh, localization for something, for putting in notifications, like if you're entering a trigger and it's a capping point, you can say a red player has started capping point A. You can use localization with that and do a little bit of arithmetic for like, you know, what needs to go into where and then push that to the string message. So in here, we're just going to say trigger entered, if I can type. So we're just going to have it say, you know, trigger entered whenever this goes. And we're going to have the same thing here. So for string author, you can just say whoever does this. So I'm just going to say um, overlord. It's normally what I do. And we're just going to say player has entered the trigger area. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Anyways, so those two things, so this will add a notification. So the notifications are normally the text that pops up at the bottom center of your screen. And then the chat message is obviously over on the bottom left. And the string flaunt, flaunt, font obviously is blue. Now you have to be really careful with this because you need to make sure that the color word that you're putting in is the colors that the system in the game accepts. There is a list somewhere. I do not know where it is right now. That's something that's a little bit, this is a little bit off to the side, but you can put in like orange, red, yellow, black, blue, etc., stuff like that. You can't do something like off gray ocean blue. It won't know what the hell that is. <laughs> Also, I just realized I have capitalization problem here. So, and then if you want to, is you can also, so for what we're also gonna do here is we're gonna use the integer 64 player ID and we're gonna push it to here for the add notification. So what that'll do is that notification will now only apply to whoever, whoever walks into that trigger area. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're using this, make sure that you will have the trigger name be exactly as the trigger name is in the game world that you placed. If it's different, it won't work, and you won't be able to tell it's not working um, or that you have a mistype. Pretty much the only way you'll be able to tell is if you walk in, it won't send anything. But for you debugging, you won't be able to tell if it's because you mistyped something or if it's because you connected something wrong. Now, this is a really simple script in reality and obviously a lot of stuff is just simple and you just add stuff together but this is in all honesty the simplest way to have something pop up when somebody has entered a trigger and obviously you can go further on this and you can have another event here for if the trigger is left so this will tr send off whenever somebody leaves that trigger area so again we're going to use trigger underscore test And again, we're just gonna pretty much copy both of these. And instead we're gonna say trigger exited. And player has exited the trigger area. And in this case, we're just gonna do uh, inline connection here instead of a sequence connection. And that's pretty much it. Oh, uh, let me add the, uh, the long player ID connection. But that is pretty much it. That's the most simple way to get something to happen when there's an area trigger entered. Uh, I will show you how to use an event like this one where it gives you the string trigger name. So in this case, let's say you have several and you don't necessarily want to go type it out here. You can have it do a check. So using a script node, we're going to use a branch. So we can have it do a branch. So when this is triggered, Let's just move this up here. We're gonna have it check to see if the name of the trigger is trigger test. So really quickly, we're gonna do an arithmetic and we're gonna do is equal to. And so from here, what we're gonna do is the first input, we're gonna drag from the string trigger name to here. And then we can do a variable or, sorry, not a list. <clears throat> we could do a constant here. And we're gonna tell the constant that this is a string. And so then in the string, we're going to type trigger underscore test. And we'll put that into input B of the arithmetic. Now the output of this, we're going to put into the comparator. 
And now with the branch, we can tell it what we want it to do if it's true and what we want it to do if it's false. So if it's false, we're just going to leave it where it doesn't do anything. But if it's true, we're again, we're going to have it where it puts out a notification. Whoops, as I misclicked here. And again, and you can drag again the integer 64 player ID from all the way back here and connect it up to here to <clears throat> give it to the notification so the notification goes to that player. Now, there is another way of doing this. You can have a, there's a way to do it. Let me, sorry, I need to spend a little bit. So I need to actually look at, is it a switch? I believe it is a switch. Yes. Okay. So what you can use this with is what's called a switch. Now, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this and I'm going to just copy this and move it into another area just so it's a little bit cleaner and we don't have a lot of stuff sitting everywhere. So you can use what's called a switch. So what a switch does is let's say you have like, we, we have 12 triggers. So we'll just do trigger one for here. So what this does is this acts like a branch, except for this acts like multiple branches executing at the same time. So you can have it where once that area trigger is entered and it sends out that string trigger name is you can have it compared to the values in your switch. And then obviously for each switch, let me just grab this real quick. And then obviously for each uh, switch, you can have it send out a different notification. So you can say for this one, you know, trigger one entered. And then we add another value here. We're going to say this is, you know, trigger two. And copy paste this again. And for this one, we're going to say, you know, trigger, trigger two has been entered. And so this is a nice, easy way to kind of keep it organized. And also for if there's going to be multiple things that you want to be checking against and you want it all in one area is you can use switches. This is very good when stuff gets very complex. Um, but that's really the main kind of three ways to get something to pop up when you have somebody step into a trigger area. And hopefully Hester that this, I'm hoping Hester that this answers your question. If you, if you still don't understand, I can try to walk you through a little bit more in depth and trying to get this to work. I do know that currently there is a little bit of problems getting scripts to work on worlds. I have seen that you have to go into the world files and change certain settings. Um, but at the end of this video, and it's going to be right next now, I'm going to show you an example world with this script running, showing that it does work. So I'll catch you guys then. All right, everybody, and welcome. So I really quickly made a UT Star Earth world, and through that one section of the scripts in here so that we can see how it works. Um, I just want to say one thing you're going to want to do whenever you load up the world that's supposed to have your script on it, just double press F11 and obviously your view will change. But over on here on the right, you want to take a look at your running mission scripts and your running state machines. Now, if you don't see anything here, that means that your world file, world file is probably set up incorrectly. I was actually... You, you haven't seen it here, but I actually spent about the last hour trying to get this to work and then I found out that what the problem was is I was using a world other than the world generated by the um, by the visual scripting tool. Now, if you don't know about this, whenever you create a new scenario, it creates a single mission world for you and it will automatically set up that world's SP, not SPC, it'll set up that world's sandbox file for your script that's associated with it. Now what you can then do is you can copy that into a custom world, load that, build in it, save it, and then move that back to your mod folder, back into your scenario folder for whatever scenario you're working on. If you're doing what I did and try to take a world that you already had, move it in there and get it to work, you're gonna have to do a little bit of messing around with the sandbox file, but I won't get into that here. But anyways, as you can see, right here in front of us, we have our trigger test which is this green circle. I know there's a lot going on on screen, but you can kind of see it here. And obviously our mission script is running. 
So assuming that this works correctly, and it does, you can see that we have the two sets of text. Now the reason why I have two sets of text is because I kept both styles of how do you detect if somebody walked into it. So this will work no matter how many times that you enter this trigger. And this is the very basic way, obviously. I don't, oh, those are all planet checks, sorry. So that's the very most basic way of getting something to happen when you enter a trigger. Thank you all for watching this. If you have your own questions, please either go to the Space Engineers Visual Scripting Tool tutorial thread, which I'll leave a link down below in the description, or you can also ask in the comments and I'll do my best to try to answer them with different videos or point you to the correct video that shows you how to do what you're asking.